one of the things that I am seeking to do is to work through the Psalms and try to look at them uh, systematically as we come to them. And what I'm doing now is Psalm 9. I work my way through a number of Messianic Psalms and uh, up through now also Psalm 7, where we look at each word grammatically. And I'm seeking to do the same, bringing out morphology as well as uh, some syntax. And hopefully this will help others that maybe want to read along with me. I'm going to seek to do this uh, from memory as much as I possibly can, uh, and then go back and correct myself. So there may be some corrections that I'll have uh, in, the, um, in the written part of what I'm doing, but I would just encourage anyone that would like to read along to follow, and I hope that this will help in the study of the Hebrew Bible. So we begin. Let me talk a little bit about uh, Psalm uh, 9. It is a psalm that some have related to verse 10 or, or Psalm 10 and seen both together. It's a song of thanksgiving. However, I think most believe that Psalm 9 is an independent unit by itself and Psalm 10 as well. And so in this song of thanksgiving, we're going to see that uh, how God is the protector of the psalmist. And we can apply this over the board, I think, in the New Testament, how the Lord has promised to be with those who uh, love him and promise never to leave them. So we begin in uh, the introduction, verse 1, Alam natseach almut labain mizmor le David. That is a psalm, or for the leader, upon the mut lavin, a psalm by David. Notice, Alam uh, natseach is from the root natsach, uh, to be, we could say, uh, to the uh, leader or the preeminent one. It is interesting that as we look at this, we have a participle, and notice we have a shiva followed by a pathak, doubling of the middle radical in the tzadi, and so uh, for the leader. And we do not know what mut uh, la bain is. Some take it to simply be like a musical melody of some sort. So for the leader upon mut la bain, mizmor le David, that is a song belonging to David. And I personally would probably understand David as the authorship, seeing the Lamed here as a Lamed of, of authorship. So then we go on in verse 2. And notice it reads, Ode Adonai Becholibi, Asapra Kol Nefla Otecha. That is, I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart, with my whole heart. And I will declare all of your marvelous works, all of your uh, wonderful works. Notice, uh, first of all, ode, we have the verb yada, which historically was vada, a pei vav uh, root. And so historically it would have been ode, becoming ode, a hifil imperfect first uh, person or first common singular from the root yada, historically vada. That's why we have this aw becoming a holem vav. So I will cause 
to uh, declare or give thanks, I should say, I will cause to give thanks uh, to the Lord, unto the Lord, with all of my heart, the whole uh, with, uh, can I say, my whole heart. And notice libi is from the noun lev, and then and lib is in construct with lev, and e is your pronominal suffix, first person singular. So I will give thanks unto the Lord with all my heart, asapra ko nifla otecha. I will tell or I will declare. Notice asapra. We have a PL uh, imperfect first person uh, singular from the root safar. And we could see this as a cohortative. Uh, that is, let me declare, especially with the a ah suffix. And we have a hate pata under the aleph followed by pata. That gives it away as a PL morphologically. And we have the doubling of the middle radical in the, in the phi. So I, uh, or in the, in the path. So I will declare all nifla otecha, all of your, and we could translate this, marvelous works. Notice uh, nifla otecha is from the root uh, uh, pala, meaning to be wonderful, that noon prefix indicates that we're looking at a nifal stem. This is a nifal participle, feminine plural, from the root pala, uh, to be a wonder. And notice the echa uh, is your pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. So let me declare all of, uh, we could render it, your marvelous works. And then I will tell, uh, I will be glad. Now we move on to verse 3. Notice verse 3. Esmacha ve'el eltsa v'chvak azamra shemcha el yon. That is, again, we have a cohortative, uh, let me be glad, or I will be glad, and we have a cow uh, in, imperfect used as a cohortative here, first person singular, first common singular from samach, to be glad. And the next word is another cohortative, uh, the el, el sa from alat, to exult, uh, or to exult, E-X-U-L-T. I will exult in you. Again, uh, he's really making a, a praise here. I'm going, or let me exult in you. And then, let me sing praise to your name. Azamra Shemcha Elyon. Notice again, we have another uh, cohortative here, except notice the vowel a pattern here, azamra, we have a pl uh, cohortative first person singular from zamar, uh, again with the a ah giving it away as well, so as well as the context. So uh, let me remember, uh, or excuse me, let me sing praises uh, to your name, Shemcha means name from Shem, and Ha is your pronominal suffix, second masculine singular, El Yon, O Most High. In other words, I want to praise your name. And that should be what we want to do, to praise the name of the Lord. And uh, as Christians who uh, are let's say, reading this uh, with me, and I am a, a minister, a Christian minister, it's one of the challenges that we have every day to praise the Lord for all that he has done for us. 
And then he goes on in verse 4 to continue. Beshuv oyevai achor yikashalu veyovadu mipanecha. And so we translate verse 4 uh, when my enemies are turned backward or are turned back. Yikashalu veyovadu mipanecha. They stumble and they perish uh, in your presence or at or from your presence. Notice the shuv here is the infinitive construct, the cow infinitive construct from the root shuv. It's where we get the word to repent, to turn about or to turn around. Except here, it's looking at the psalmist enemies being turned back. Notice <clears throat> when my enemies are turned back. And Oyevai, notice, is from Oyev. It is a cow participle, uh, masculine singular uh, from Oyev. Notice the O vowel, the holem vav, uh, giving it away as a participial form. And so when and the I is your pronominal suffix, first uh, person singular. So when my enemies are turned behind or are turned back. Yikashalu v'yovadu mipanecha. That is, they stumble. And notice, uh, yikashalu is from yin kashalu. Uh, here we have another nifal form in verse 4. Uh, notice what is happening here in this nifal uh, form. The noon has assimilated into the ka. So yin kashalu has become yik kashalu historically by progressive assimilation. And that's why we have the dogish in the ka. So as we render this, they shall stumble and they shall perish from my presence or from my face. Notice the yovadu is from avad to perish. It's a cow imperfect, a third masculine plural from avad. And the vav here is just your simple vav uh, conjunction and they shall perish mipanecha from uh, your face, that is, from the face of the Lord. Notice men here, the noon has assimilated into uh, the P here, and we have a dogish showing that. And then here we have the noun, panayim, uh, becoming pane in construct with ha. Uh, the dual form in construct with ha. So <clears throat> they shall stumble and perish from before you. And then as we read verse 5, it continues, Ki asiti mishpati v'dini yashavta lechisei shofet sedik. For you have done uh, my justice and my uh, cause, we could say. Or we could translate it, you have maintained or, or, or brought about uh, my right and my cause. Yashavta uh, lechisei shofet sedik. You set uh, to your throne or upon your throne judging uh, as a righteous judge are judging uh, with righteousness, said they. Notice a uh, key is giving uh, a causal clause here for showing how God has uh, turned back the enemies of the psalmist, he's saying, for you have uh, done or maintained my right or the justice due me and my cause. 
Notice uh, Sita is your cow, a perfect second masculine singular with the ta suffix from the root asa. By the way, these forms, in my understanding, were historically Lamed Yod forms, and we see that Yod coming back again in this form. So you have uh, maintained would be a good way to translate it or, or, or done, uh, brought about my justice, Mishpati, Mishpat means justice, and E is your pronominal suffix, first person singular, and my uh, right cause. Uh, vedini, my judgment, my right judgment. Notice din is judgment and e is your pronominal suffix, first person singular. And you sit, yeshavta lechise shofet sedek. You sat upon the throne, judging uh, with righteousness. Notice yeshavta is from the root yashav to set. It's a cow perfect second masculine singular from yashav and to your or to the throne, uh, upon the throne we could say, uh, kise meaning throne, uh, followed by the inseparable preposition the lama, shofet, judging with righteousness. Uh, this is a participial form from Shafat. Uh, it can also be understood as a noun, simply meaning a righteous judge. So you sit on your throne judging uh, with righteousness. And what a, a reassurance here. We're seeing uh, the praise of the psalmist. And then he's defining what God is like who brought that uh, deliverance to him. And so as we move on to verse six, he says, uh, reading uh, verse six, Ga'arta goyim, ivata rasha, shema machita le'olam ba'ed. Notice in verse six, you have rebuked nations. You have destroyed the wicked. Their name you have wiped out or you have blotted out forever and ever. Notice Ga'arta is your cow a perfect second masculine singular from the root Ga'ar to rebuke. Goyim means nations. It's a masculine plural uh, suffix ending uh, from Goy. And then you have destroyed from avad. Notice here we have a pl, a pl form with the i, with the doubling of the middle radical. You have destroyed, and so it's a pl uh, perfect second masculine singular from avad. So you have destroyed uh, the wicked. And. Uh, Rasha here could be a collective singular, the wicked ones collectively. Wicked one meaning wicked ones. And their name, uh, Shimam Machita, uh, or Shemam, or Shimam, their name uh, you have blotted out. Maha is the root here, and it is a cow uh, perfect second masculine singular from Maha. So their name, uh, and am, by the way, is that pronominal suffix, third masculine plural. Their name, you have blotted out, the ulam ba'ed, forever and ever. And so he's looking at how God has judged uh, his enemies uh, and the nations that had been opposing him. And here, this could take more of a national note, uh, possibly. Uh, but it can also be looking at God's judgment uh, over those who were uh, persecuting the psalmist. So as we go on in the next verse, uh, verse 7, Ha'oyev tamu choravot la netzach, the arim natashta 
avad zikram hema. Notice as we read this verse, we could understand ha oyev as an address, something like uh, oh enemy would be a way that we could uh, render it. And then he goes on as concerning the enemy, maybe we could say, uh, the probably concerning you, O enemy, uh, the waste places, the waste places have come to an end. And notice uh, tamu is from the root tamam, and it is <clears throat> a cow, a perfect, second uh, person uh, plural from tamam. That is, the waste places have come to an end forever, and the cities uh, which you uprooted, O Lord. But Arim, here we have the plural from Ir, city, and then Natashta is your cow perfect, second masculine singular from Natash. So the cities you have uprooted, meaning to uproot, uh, their memory uh, has perished. Uh, their memory has perished. Notice Avad is just your cow perfect, third masculine singular from Avad, and Zikram is memory, and Am is your pronominal suffix, meaning their memory, Zikram. Now we have Hema, they have perished. Uh, from a syntactical point of view, uh, this is putting, making it emphatic, because you have the sentence just could have read the uh, arim natashta avad zikram, but hema adds emphasis to it uh, from a syntactical point of view. That is, uh, the cities you have uprooted, uh, and then their very memory, they uh, have perished, something like that, or have perished. Then we move on to the next verse, verse 8. But Adonai le'olam yeshev, konein la'mishpat kiso. But the Lord forever will dwell, uh, establishing with justice his throne. Notice uh, we have emphatic here, but the Lord, or for the Lord, le'olam forever Yeshay will dwell. Uh, notice this is a cow imperfect, a uh, third masculine singular from the root uh, Yashav, which historically was Vashav, and the, the Vav here uh, dropped out in this Pei Vav historic verb. Then we have compensatory lengthening under the prefix Yod. So the Lord forever will dwell in this cow imperfect and third masculine singular uh, konein le mishpat kiso that is establishing uh, his kingdom forever now notice as we look at this uh, uh, form here konein is from kun it's a middle week verb and here we have a gemination in the gimbal being repeated again. And we have a polel, uh, uh, we have a polel uh, perfect here from kun. And one of the things that uh, grammatically happens when you have a middle weak verb, you cannot double the middle radical. So what happens instead of doubling the middle radical, the final a uh, consonant uh, geminates or is repeated in the polel form, showing intensification, like an appeal. So uh, we would render this, he has established uh, his throne for judgment. La mishpat for judgment, and then kisei, uh, his throne, from kisa 
Israeli throne. Then as we move on to verse 9, it reads, Vuhu Yishpot Tevel Betzedek Yadin Le'umim Bameshareem But he will judge the earth in righteousness. Looking at the righteous judge, the psalmist is saying, who will judge the earth uh, in righteousness. Notice who is your personal pronoun, he. I always get amused. Who is he and he is she uh, in, in the Hebrew uh, personal pronouns, third person uh, personal pronouns. But he will judge. Yishpot is from Shafat to judge. Cow imperfect, third masculine singular from Shafat. The uh, Tevel meanings world in righteousness. Sedek is righteousness preceded by your inseparable preposition, bet. He will judge, notice, yadin le'itot batsura. That is, he will judge the world in righteousness and he will judge the peoples with equity. Notice yadin is from the middle week verb din, Cal imperfect, third masculine, singular from Dean. Le'umim means the peoples. And then Bemesharim means with equity. So the Lord judges equitously. And as we look at the New Testament, uh, it talks about how at the final judgment, the Lord will judge everyone according to their works. That does not mean of New Testament theology, that one is saved by works. But can we say uh, one's works declare whether faith in Christ was real or not? It's sort of like I've often said, if there's fire in the fireplace, there should be smoke coming out of the chimney. And so he will judge equitously. And then uh, as we move on in verse 10, notice verse 10, uh, reads, Vihi Adonai Misgav Ladat, Misgav Leitot Bat Sara. So, verse 10, the Lord will also uh, be a high tower to the oppressed, a high tower in times of trouble. Uh, Ve'yehi uh, is from the root ya to be. And notice it's a cow imperfect, third masculine singular from ya. So, and the Lord will be a high tower. What a beautiful picture here. A place of protection. A high tower uh, for the oppressed. And uh, I love that. Uh, verse here, and notice he repeats it again. Misgav leitot batsara, that is a high tower in times of trouble. And notice eight becomes itot in your feminine plural here, and so uh, the Lord will be that high tower that brings like a fortress and within its walls one can feel protected safe from destruction and i've reminded in terms of new testament theology it is wonderful to know that christ has become that high tower that he has defeated satan the demons and those who uh, find themselves in him are secure I'm reminded of, of, he, of uh, Romans chapter 8, that nothing shall ever sever us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he becomes that high tower. And then in verse 11, as it goes on, notice uh, it says, V'yivtachu v'cha yodei shemecha ki lo azavtam, or excuse me, that is, in verse 
uh, 11. And they that trust in you know your name. They that put their trust in you are the ones who know your name. For you have not abandoned or you have not forsaken those who seek you, O Lord. Notice Vayibtahu is from the root batach to trust. It is a cow imperfect, a third masculine a plural from batach. And they that trust in you, Bacha, your uh, inseparable preposition, Ve, followed by Cha, your pronominal suffix, second masculine singular, those who know your name have trusted in you. Notice uh, Yod de A is from Yada to know. And here we're looking at a participle. Notice the whole Bob, the oval, indicates a participial form, a cow participle a masculine plural from yada. And the seriyod puts it in construct with uh, shamecha. So those, uh, the knowers of your name, notice shem means name, and ha is your pronominal suffix second masculine singular. So the knowers of your name uh, trust in you and you have not forsaken those who seek you. Notice key or for. The reason they can trust in you is for. Lo, not. You have not forsaken. Azabta is your cal perfect second masculine singular from azab to forsake. And then dora shecha. Again, we have a participle, a cal active. Uh, or a cow participle, I should say, masculine plural from darash with a pronominal suffix in the cha. So those who trust in you, you have not forsaken. And so he goes on then to talk about how the Lord is going to avenge that which uh, has been wrong and there's going to be a prayer of the humble then to the Lord. And so we'll go on with that later. I think I'm going to stop here rather than making this too long at verse 11. So what we've seen here is a beautiful picture, praising the Lord that the psalmist has and concluding with the Lord as a high tower and that he protects in times of trouble. And as a Christian minister, I am applying this to Christ in the New Testament, knowing that one is secure in him and that nothing, Paul tells us in Romans 8, can ever sever us from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I hope that reading the Hebrew and looking at each word is helpful. I want to continue working through each of the Psalms that I can and sharing uh, with anyone that would have an interest.